the church say amen. amen. Let the church say amen again. Amen. Once again, we've been blessed by the God of heaven who doeth all things well, who saw fit one more time that we're able to come together on this day in this place with the express purpose of worshiping him in spirit and in truth. And for that, brothers and sisters, you and I ought to be eternally grateful. God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. What we'll gift this morning started you on your way, gave you the activity of your limbs, the ability to be able to put one foot in front of another. As you slumber, slumber, and slept on last night, he looked at you and he said, one more day. Somebody said, if you got a pulse, that means God still has a purpose for your life. You may be discouraged in here on this morning, but God still has a purpose for you, even in the midst of your pain. That's going to be good news for somebody on today. We appreciate uh, the devotional part of our services. Our brother's doing an excellent job leading us. Our young men just growing into themselves. Amen. The future leaders of the church lead to actually the job. And, and uh, Xavier on the base as well. We're we growing as a church. Amen. Next generation, you got to pass on the baton. Amen. Amen. We appreciate. Uh, we got a good blend. And that's uh, been an encouragement for every minister that's come. And see, y'all got a blend of the older working with the younger. That's a beautiful thing. And uh, I said, now I need to go home and implement that better in my own home congregation. So uh, it's a great thing for others to be able to come and see those working together. The generations working together. What a beautiful thing. To those who are members of the, uh, who are not members of the body of Christ, uh, we just want to let you know you're indeed our honored guests. We make no bones about it here at the New Haven Church. We want you to come to be with us again, again, and again. again. And members of the body of Christ, we just expect to see you. We are, I have uh, several uh, big things that are coming up in the next couple of weeks, uh, but actually even on next week, we want to prepare you for our marriage weekend that's coming up. Dr. Bruce McClure out of the D.C. area is going to be here preaching on next Sunday morning. He's going to be doing the Bible study hour as well as the sermon on the morning. He specializes in marriage and family therapy. He goes all across the country hosting uh, seminars and workshops on the family, and you are in for a tree. God knows how to break it down and you will be blessed. He can say, when can we break him back? Uh, so just that we're looking, we're looking for you to show up in big numbers, just do your reasonable service and we know that when you come, you will be blessed. Uh, continue to pray for all of our efforts that many will come and be encouraged uh, on the events that are ahead of us. want to direct your attention to Hebrews, the third chapter. Hebrews chapter 3. We're going to begin at verse number 1. I'll give you a full context of the text that we have before us on today. Hebrews chapter 3. We're going to begin at about verse number 1. And uh, we'll also want to remind you following service today, we're going to be having our, our group uh, photos of our ministry. So please be prepared after service. Uh, we have our, our media team that has things set up in the back. Uh, on the fellowship side, at least in one of the classrooms to be able to get that done. So we can post you up on the wall. All of those who are in particular ministries, uh, we're looking to get the group photos. And next week, next Sunday, is going to be our congregational photo. We're going to have everybody up here on the front, and we're going to take a mass photo, and we're going to place that out in the foyer somewhere. So all are able to come and to see who we are. Amen. Amen. Um, so please prepare yourself for these items as well. Uh, before we dive into chapter 3, let's take a verse or 2. Yield not to temptation, page 111. <clears throat> Yield not to temptation, for you think it's sin. You know that he hates victory, will have help you some other to win. And hold out fire, man, for the Lord. Yeah. 
So we see that they could not enter because of their unbelief. This morning I want to speak to you from the time of life. Hold on to God and don't let go. Hold on to God and don't let go. Four points for you today. Uh, the A part this morning, B part tonight. Uh, number one, don't abandon God who rescued you. Verse 12. Don't abandon God who rescued you. Number two, encourage one another daily to live for God. Encourage one another daily to live for God. I thought I would get some more amens on that because I, I don't know about you, but I need all the encouragement I can get. Because if you're not encouraged, I can sure enough tell you the devil is trying to discourage me. And I just assume if he's trying to discourage me, he might be in your neighborhood too. Number three, don't allow your heart to be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. This is a big one. Hopefully we get to this this morning and not yet to come back tonight. Don't allow your heart to be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. And number four, repent and turn to God today. Repent and turn to God today. Not tomorrow. Today. Not next week. Not next month. Not when I get 20, not when I get 30, not when I get 40, today. Because all we have is right now. Message again, hold on to God and don't let go. In our text, just give you a little bit of background regarding the Hebrew letter. Uh, many don't, uh, it's not expressly stated who wrote this book, but many surmise based on the style, it was the Apostle Paul. He has a Pauline style uh, based on the literary structure and working of it. But in this epistle, the Hebrew writer is calling to encourage those Jewish Christians who at one time had abandoned Judaism and began to follow Christ. He's writing to encourage them because they have come under such a great persecution and now they find themselves drifting back into their old ways. They find themselves drifting back into their old religion. They find themselves drifting back into their old habits. There's a theme throughout the book of Hebrews, and we find this, that Christ is superior to all. That's the thing throughout the book. He's making the argument, because you have to understand, the Jews held high Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and especially Moses. They even deemed these characters in Scripture to be even greater than Jesus, the Christ. We find throughout the book of Hebrews, the writer makes the case in chapter 1 and chapter 2 that Jesus is greater than the angels. In chapter 3 through chapter 4, Jesus is greater than Moses, the great lawgiver. In chapter 5 through about verse chapter 10, Jesus is greater than Aaron, the Aaronic priesthood, and Jesus is proven to be our great high priest. And then throughout the course in chapter 11, which is known as the, the hall of faith, Hebrews is an example of how to live in faith regardless of the circumstances. The Hebrew writer makes faith tangible by illustrating in chapter 11 those Hebrews who endured difficulty but yet under trial. I don't know about you. I don't know about you. It's not always easy to live the Christian life. Somebody said, if you're doing it right, it's not always easy. <laughs> because when you look at this thing, you have to constantly deny yourself. There's some things that you want to do. Some of your posturing is always to make yourself to have the advantage. But this is the same book that says, consider not your own things, but look out for the needs of others. Hold on to God and don't let go. 
these Jewish Christians based on the real persecution that they were facing. We like to quote, to get, make, get, make sure folk come to church. Well, first thing we quote is Hebrews 10 and verse number 25, where it says, Forsake not the assembling of yourselves together as a matter of some is. It says, But we ought to exalt one another so much the more as you see the day approaching. What you have to do is look back to the Palestinian lens and begin to actually see the persecution that Christians of that day were actually facing. You have to understand that that Christianity was a persecuted faith. It was a faith in many places and many towns that was still against the law. And as a result of the church services that uh, had came about and that had happened, uh, many times people had stopped going because many times there they had relatives who went to Wednesday night Bible class who had went to the assembly of the saints and they were arrested, jailed, beaten, or even killed. And as a result, you begin to start thinking twice whether I'm going to go to Washington or not because the last time cousin went, the last time my daddy went, they didn't make it home. And Paul, uh, the, the Hebrew writer, is still giving the admonition, don't forsake coming together. Like some of you all are doing, but I'm encouraging you. It's important for us to encourage one another so much the more. Why? Because it's a day approaching, judgment's coming, and we got to get ready for it. But back then, throughout that Palestinian list, that was a real thing. You had a man who had a family. Look, you would have the Roman guard that would come up and they would put a spear to your child's neck and say, renounce Jesus right now or I'll kill him on the spot. Those are the kinds of questions that you begin to ask. Do you still believe? It's easy to say that I'm a Christian, I'm a member of the body of Christ or the church of Christ while we're in here all together. But can you do that on your job? Well, there are too many of us that act as if we're under the secret service protection. We're under witness protection. we got to come out the closet. Everybody else is. you got too many Christians that are in hiding. And the Hebrews writer, he's, he's, he's writing them, telling them to hold on to their faith. He says, I know you hold Moses in high regard, but that's something I want to let you know on today. Jesus is greater than Moses. He was, in, he was obedient into all of his house, but Christ is head over the house, which is the church. He said, in whose you are. He gives them some admonitions based on the dynamic of the text. He says in verse number 12, beware, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. When I think about the illustration of God's preserving power to the children of Israel, I remember an angel of God in a pillar of cloud and a fire guarded the multitude. Exodus 13, 21 to 22. There's sometimes, some situations, some circumstances we find ourselves in, in life, and we can't blame God for it. Sometimes we did it. Sometimes it was our choice. Sometimes it was our decision. People were trying to warn us, but we think we're grown enough and smart enough and that we know the future. And then sometimes we still have to deal with the consequence. So I said, I told you not to marry that man. I told you to leave her alone, and now you're stuck. When you say I do, I stop by telling you, you did. He said, brother, what happened? What happened? What happened? What happened? I married the wrong one. Well, you got to start treating her like she's the right one. She might act better. That works in reverse too. Wait, brother, I, I married the wrong man. We're treating like he's the right man. He might act better. That was true. He said the marriage time is not too weak. Last, next week, I figured I just dropped out while I was on the way. Now, he made provision for that. You remember in Exodus chapter 15, God made the bitter water sweet and drinkable. God was the one who allowed manna to rain down from heaven. You remember they started complaining about the, the manna that God has sent, which was a form of a, of a cake, that, that a, a meal that was sweet. And people said, I'm tired of that. And then God said, quail. Yeah. You remember that? They out there in the desert, they said, listen, we thirsty. And then God was the same God who brought water from a rock. God preserved Israel's clothing in the midst of the wilderness. Amen, somebody. You, you know, they didn't have the high-end stuff that we have today. And over time, look, you get holes in it. Don't let a moth get in there. Amen, somebody. Regardless of how expensive you got to keep cleaning. Over time, it wears out. 
He said, for 40 years, I preserved your clothing where it didn't get old. He said, he said, look, you were in the wilderness, Deuteronomy chapter 8, and your foot did not sweat. Yeah. Amen, somebody. We got Dr. Scholes. We got all these foot insert things, and your feet still swelling up today. He leave all that salt alone. He said, well, God, God lets the Israelites do the great and terrible wilderness where the Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse number 15 where there were fiery serpents and scorpions in the desert land which God brought water out of a flint rock and he rained down manna from heaven. What are you saying? But then what are you trying to set up? I just said all that to say God had already demonstrated, demonstrated his delivering power to his people time and time and time again. I don't know about you, but the same thing happens to us every now and again. We forget what God has already done. You find yourself in a place, you find yourself in a place, why is this happening to me? I ain't never been, this, been in this situation before. Lord, how can you allow this to happen? If I delivered you before, I've got the power to deliver you again. I am God all by myself. I'll stop by the table. As his people, sometimes you've got to be reminded. But sometimes we become like Israel and we are short sighted about the things and the provisions and the way ways of, that God has made time and time again. But I stopped by to tell you this morning, hold on to God and don't let go. See, persecution had them shrinking back. But see, sometimes today, it's just the allurement of the world. It seems like I have more fun in the world. It seems like the world has more fun than me, Brother Newton. That's why I'm having a hard time staying focused and Bible class and staying, on my phone, staying off my phone and washing and falling asleep. But as soon as service is over, I got energy again. Let's go get into what we're going to get in. It's time to eat now. But, but, but service time, the washer time, it's not time to rest. You got it twisted. Your focus is off, and you're going to keep running into a brick wall. God, where are you? I've been in the same place from the beginning of time. But you've got to learn to be able to see him even through the midst of the storm and the rain. What's that, Jesus? Okay. Uh, don't abandon God who rescued you. That's the first one. He said, he said, listen, he said, listen, beware, brother, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief. What was his first problem? God delivered them from Egyptian bondage, and God said, I've got a place, a land that flows with milk and honey. He said, a land where there's abundance, a land where there's silver and gold, a land where you can build goodly houses. I've got that land for you. Look, Israel saw God deliver them from Egyptian bondage, but they didn't trust him and have enough faith that he could deliver them to King. He called it an evil heart of unbelief. Why is it an evil heart? Because you begin to dismiss what I've already demonstrated as if it was nothing. And sometimes we're the same way with God. And you know what? We got a roller coaster faith. When things is good, we up. Soon as things get bad, I guess God don't hear my prayers no more. I guess the song didn't work. I guess the sermon wasn't powerful enough. I guess, look, no, God is God all by itself. Sometimes there's something you've got to learn through the trial. You can't grow your faith without first going through some tests. There is no testimony without first going through a test. You can't grow impatient without somebody getting on your last nerve and you get to the point where you're ticked off to the point of tentacity. I'm trying to go in patient. I have to I pray the Lord help me with my patience. Well, you can't go in patient without being tested. Yeah. What do you want me? I went to work and this person was just acting so great. Oh, really? I heard what you asked for prayers for yesterday. I'm not surprised. Yeah. And sometimes as his people, we got to get to the point in our own spiritual life where we got to grow up. There's some things we've got to give up, we've got to grow up in order to grow up. You can't get to where God is without going through some tests. And see, you can't sleep your way through the test and pass. Amen, somebody. You can go to school and have perfect attendance and still fail. You've got to learn to pay attention in class. If you fail the test, 
Christ, it'll come right back around again. And sometimes, look, we keep seeing some of the same thing, but we passed the test the first time. God said, I can't take you to the next level until you first pass it on this level. If you don't pass it on this level, you won't be ready for this level. I stopped by the tell you, it doesn't matter where you were sin. If you start at the corporate bottom, a sin through the corporate ladder, there's a devil on every level. If you had a devil with your associate's degree, it's a devil at the bachelor level. If you had a devil at the bachelor level, there's a devil at the bachelor level. If you work it on your feet, it's a devil at that level. There's a devil on every level. But you've got to prepare yourself to be ready. But sometimes, the first sign of test, the first sign of trouble, I quit. It's over. It ain't work out. That's how we are in relationship. Get back in there. We don't have no quitters in this house. You can't sign up for stuff. You done paid your money and you done volunteered. You ain't quitting. Mama wouldn't let me quit. I done paid my money. You gonna see it through to the end. But mine's it's only three packages. You going to every single one of them. Right, well, you pay her money, boy. <laughs> You go, you gonna see it through. But you know what? But let me tell you something. You got to make sure that you have not developed a prince mentality. Yeah. If you quit one, it's easier to stop quitting in other areas of your life. Yeah. Soon as it gets hard, you start retreating. Yeah. Your kids are, it's the teacher fault. Yeah. They hard on me. They give too much work. They're preparing you for the next level. They're not there to be your friend. You need to get what they have. Preach, brother, dude. It's not always the teacher's fault. Your child needs to learn and grow and to take that lump so that they can make it in society. I'm, I'm not just talking about your house. I'm talking about my house, too. You keep going up and trying to defend them. They ain't never learning a lesson. I'm sorry. I was raised old school. See, I, I was a parent. Where, I, I was a child where I had to go to parent conference with my parent. Grandma would drag me right up in there. If they say something wrong, I'm going to sit and look right at you. Now tell me they lying. Tell me they lying. They're not lying, Grandma. Wait till you get home. Okay. He's not going to have this problem anymore. I had to go home and write a hundred times and do it. But guess what? I learned. That's the problem. We don't learn. You always jumping in and stepping in. And see, you did that in middle school and high school, and now they're 40 and can't fit for themselves. Amen. Mom, can you come to my job and talk to my supervisor? Because, no! <laughs> Too old for that. <laughs> you got to grow up. Amen. But see, sometimes the first time of trouble, you got that quitting you. And see, the children of Israel at this time, those Jewish Christians, man, they, they embraced Christ, but because of the persecution. And as a belong, and also as a part of being a part of a persecuted faith, if you are a person with a trade, listen, they're trying to get you to go back to Judaism. They will say, you know what, he's, he's one of those Christians, and let's stop supporting his store. We're not going to patronize his, his business anymore. Not only are you harmed spiritually, now you're affected in your pocketbook spiritually. Then you begin to ask yourself the question, is this faith really worth it? It seems like after I got baptized, I got more problems than I had. Y'all ain't trying to work with me. Yeah. Maybe that was just how it seemed to me. When you switch sides, now the enemy's got to focus on you even more. Why the devil going to bother you when he already had you? Amen, somebody. You got to say what I'm talking about. The Christian life is a breeze. You ain't doing it right. Amen. It must be coming to church every Sunday and not living the life going to make you a good Christian. Amen. Amen. Don't obey the God who rescued you. Yeah. And sometimes that's what we do. You forget. You forget. Just God has made provision for us time and time and time again. And you ever think, I don't know, God, I don't know how I'm going to get out of this situation. You were scared, and you started calling people who you knew prayed, because you didn't pray that much. Right? And then things, look, it worked out, it might not have worked out according to the total way you did, but look, you got out of it. That was 20 years ago. 
God sends us through faith building circumstances. Look, as a result, listen, it's to strengthen us for the next test. It's to strengthen us for the next journey. Look, it's not designed for you to be up here and then as soon as something bad happens again, you go all the way back down. It's if you're not stabilized by your faith. You ought to be growing. I know the circumstance is different, but God is still the same. God is the one who's over the whole house. He's the one that's able to make all things happen. And see, nothing surprises God. He knew that death was going to come. He knew that loss was going to come. He knew, he knew this employment would be upended. Now you got to go in a whole other direction. See, sometimes he knew your level of dependence was on a person, but now through the trial, it was shifted to him. God would do any and everything for his own personal glory. Romans 8, 28, For we know all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. Do you know this does not mean that everything's going to go right in my life? Sometimes you might have to be afflicted with cancer so he can use you as an example to show all the other cancer survivors to learn how to make it with the help of God. What are you saying? Look, you're not above God afflicting you to be the example he needs to draw other people. <clears throat> Sometimes he, he had to afflict Job so we can use Job as an example of strength and perseverance through difficult times. Job was the one who had to go to one funeral where he had 10 family members laid out and to deal with loss after loss after loss trying to process this thing. And when you're feeling sorry for yourself, just go read Job chapter 1 and chapter 2. Yeah. Amen, somebody? Amen. You, you, you look at it, and you think it, and you hear it, and, you, and as I mentioned, uh, this past week you think about situations and circumstances, and, and a family from our previous church on, on, on last week, even on Wednesday night, just found out uh, that one of the saints, her daughter, uh, in her 40s, she had committed suicide. Sometimes you think you got problems. And then you hear when somebody call and say, Yes, Lord. You don't even have a problem. Yes. Yes. You, you don't even, you, 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 you keep rewinding the somebody done me wrong song so much. It stopped playing. You remember before the cassette, you had to turn it over, put it on the other side. You need to stop turning it over. Put it, you just need to look around. You know what? I'm blessed. Yes. Even though everything in my situation and circumstance is not the way I want it to be. Yes. Because I stopped by the table. There's not a person at any time when everything in life is going the way they want it to. Right. 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 Amen. 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 My job, my job, I'm looking for a job, but she's healthy though. Yes. He's healthy though. Right? right. right. You chose it all alive, you know, you got you got other things going. But see, this is what you gotta say. This is the trick of the enemy. He wants us to zero in on the problem. And see, when you focus so much on the problem, you begin to dismiss all the other things that God's taking care of and sustaining while you're going through a tough time. Ain't that somebody? You, when you say, I'm going home, you know where home is. The key word when you use it. They ain't switch the locks on you. Ain't that somebody? Hey, hey, when you go to your car, you know, you ain't got to worry about it. When you go to your car, you can put the key in and drive off. The repo man didn't come to get it. He didn't find out where you were. So that's a good thing. Look, you blessed. I said that to wake something y'all up. But, but that's the way out. Listen, listen. It might be wrong, difficult on the job situation, but your home life is good. Your spirits are alive. Look, your church family's intact. You know, your grands are doing all right. Folks still in school. Only a couple people are there. That's pretty good. And then sometimes in life, it seems like there's a problem in every single area. But just know it's just a season. You get, look, see, that's why, see, this is what you got to say about suicide. It's a permanent decision to a temporary circumstance. Nothing lasts forever. Don't, don't, get, don't confuse your season with the finality of your life. Your current circumstance is not your final destination. Amen, somebody. Israel, if I can bring you out of Egyptian bondage with one man who's able to lead you through this wilderness place look, without a compass of 1.5 million people, if I can do it with him, I can bring you to the land of Canaan. But Lord, we out in the desert. We ain't got nothing.
in this ring. Look at that rock over there. Water came from a rock. Yeah, well, you were born inside here to die. Because listen, we had pomegranates back in Egypt. We had some fish back in Egypt. And we out here in the desert. We don't have anything. Moses start talking to God. Man, I start falling every single day. Well, Lord, we talk party, man. Did you switch up the menu? Because that's how some of y'all are. And God said, I'll send some quail. God has showed them time and time again. I am the God of provision. What you crying for? You need to hold on to God and don't let go. See, God is stable. Other people are not. You're not always stable. Ain't that so bad? You don't even know what you want. You always change in your mind. Before you went to the restaurant, you said you want this. And then you get there, you're like, I don't know. They've been waiting for this. I'm too many on. I mean, I'm sorry. I just, and then, and then you get envious of other people. You ever had food envy? You order something? Yes, yes. And then when somebody else ordered, you're like, oh. And you start looking at you, and you're like, Let me stop talking about food here. Y'all can't hear the rest of this. But sometimes, look, we can be preoccupied by other people's shame, other people's stuff. And you realize that's robbing you of your own contentment. Amen. Amen. Any job, they look like they're happy. With everything, the airs that everybody put on, it doesn't mean it's just true. It's people, they got a nice car, got not live in a nice house. But then when they go to the house, they go on their separate sides of the house. They like roommates. They don't like each other. You got single people that want to be married. You got married people who would say we're single. I'm not saying that. I'm, I'm booed up. I'm just saying. I'm talking about some other people. But, but see, you, you got to learn. That, listen, listen, listen. I know my, I know my wife. She crazy. But she crazy in love. She crazy in love. Crazy. She got some crazy tendencies. But that's what I know. We all do. I already told you about mine. I gotta talk about me so y'all don't get offended. Who's he talking about me in there? But y'all be laughing at me? <laughs> and you think you're gonna go and get somebody else who's old? they crazy too. They got baggage too. Even if they say they got a crazy uncle or aunt, there's craziness in the atmosphere. So you gotta learn to work with your uncle. <laughs> Y'all ain't just still get this. Don't abandon God who rescued you. Many times that's what we're doing when trials come. Even Christians. Hey, members of the body of Christ will sing these prayers. It's not about me. It's all about him. It's in my heart to serve the Lord. But then you say, I can't get up for Bible class. I got to keep coming in late like it's a practice, like it's my ritual. I ain't made no one, but when tomorrow, Monday, I got to meet the man. Oh, well, something, well, Tuesday. <laughs> Wednesday. <laughs> Y'all going back sometime. <laughs> one of these, that wrong day. Whatever, you know what I'm trying to do. But we're going to be there. We're going to put on, but the Lord's stuff, we slack it. We move it slow. Our kids are preoccupied. They looking all around. We got our older people, they looking around, watching other people sing. Are they gonna stand up again on this song? Wow. Aren't their legs tired? Wow. Again? Really? Mm. Sometimes some people just come in the spectating. That's all they do. <clears throat> you wasting a whole lot of time. See, because I value my time, I don't put my time in places that I think is a waste. I'm here because I believe this stuff. And see, it makes no sense to keep coming and listening and listening and not applying. It's futile. It's the sin and the shame to go to hell from the church. But some of us, and see, you got to say, that's your option. That's your choice. You say, well, I'm going to let all the world in this out of me. I don't care what they say. You about to stamp your ticket. 
That's your problem. You sound just like Israel. See, Israel had a drifting spirit. They had a wandering spirit. He said their hearts have wandered away from me. And we've got to be careful with that because that wandering spirit can get us into trouble. They had wandering hearts. That was in verse 10. They wandered away from the word of God. They also had an evil heart of unbelief. They saw God delivering power in Egypt, but they doubted that God could or would deliver them in the land of Canaan. Understand this. I'll just see admonition in verse number 13. He said, but exhort and encourage one another. How often? Daily. daily. What's my admonition today? It's our job to encourage one another daily to live for God. That's my job and your job. I ain't done. I just come again. Yeah, I ain't. Don't worry about that. Just focus. <laughs> it's my job and it's your job to encourage one another daily to live for God. Because I don't know about you, these are some evil days. You know what? Satan has so many Christians distracted. They preoccupy. And see, if you're not careful, you can be caught up in the distraction. You can come to church and not want to do the homework. You're not, looking, you're not looking at the fact that it's only hurting you. Why are these teachers giving us homework? Because they want you to grow in Christ. Amen. Amen. And not allow, be like some other folk who wreck their lives without a relationship with Christ. Right. Why do I need to remember this? Why do I need to study this? You got adults the same way. They need their papers. So I stopped giving them out. <laughs> the information is still here. Because sometimes you got to learn to be, look, you got to have to be accountable to yourself. Really want to grow. See, if you have, don't show the investment, if the kids don't see you involved in studying stuff at home, what do you think they're going to do? They typically don't do more than we do. They typically don't be, go beyond their example. We're already seeing a godless culture right in front of us. We're seeing confusion abound like we've never seen it before. We got confusion on every single front. Gender confusion. A boy don't know be a boy anymore. Girl don't know she a girl. One day she feel like a boy, so she might dress like one. Adults, we're confused. We don't know what bathroom that she go to. So we're saying their assignment at birth, their biology doesn't dictate who they are. That, that's that's foolishness. That's against the word of God. But in the confusion that abounds long enough. We start looking at the Word of God like there's something wrong with it. And see, if you're not careful, you can be a look. Look, we are lured away and we just sleep. We're not even paying attention. Oh, we're, oh, we're, that's all wrong. That's not the Word of God. Study in. Something that's going to help you. You need people to encourage you in your life. Why are they calling me? Because you're here. <laughs> if you show up on anybody got calling you, they're going to see you. The care ministry got a job. They, 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 it's our job to encourage the saints we don't see. Why are they sending me a car? We probably think you need some hope, maybe. Why? Because we all do. Why are you all in my bed? Why are you calling me in message? You would think people would be glad if somebody cared about you. But when you and your own feelings trying to do what you want to do, you don't care about that. You, you were about you, and that was Israel's problem. That was what God called the evil heart of unbelief. And, and, and the concept in verse number 12, see, they began the dynamic of apostasy. It's a Greek word we have. Uh, but in our English words, the word apostasy, the falling away, the abandoning. And, and, and that's what we, we got to make sure that we don't do. We don't abandon God. You can abandon God and come in here and sing songs. He said, that, he said in one case, they honor me with their mouths, but their hearts is far from me. That's why you can go and sit in a service and then fuss and cuss in the parking lot. You're in a place where God is. You're performing some of the functions that God's people do, but he's not in your heart. See, when he's in your heart, he begins to dictate your actions. Amen. 
He said, because I know what's going on. Because we saw what happened to Israel. Use this as a reminder. Use this as an example of how not to be. He said, so, since they abandoned God with an evil heart of unbelief and thought their pockets just fell in the wilderness, what we need to do, we need to encourage one another as often as we can. Was there every day. He says, you do this for the purpose of this, because if you don't, you will be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Let me tell you something about sin. Sin is attractive. Sin wear suits. Sin wear dresses. Titles. <laughs> they wear loose dresses too. Sin. Sin can masquerade. Oh, I'm not going to hurt you. I just want to bless you. Huh? Sin is always looking for you to compromise yourself. Ain't that so bad? Young ladies in, in high school, I mean, I, look, look, be careful about uh, these guys who slither up to you. Trying to get you to compromise yourself. Amen. Amen. Uh, they have a song, Love You and Leave You Alone. Sometimes that's their intent from the beginning. Unfortunately, I've come to know people, they'll, they'll tell you whatever you want to hear until they get what they want. He's not calling me back. His number don't work no more. That was his intent from the beginning. See, the enemy, he's a thief and a joyster. That's what he does. His intent is to deceive. Sin is deceitful. It'll make you, look, sin will take you farther than you want to go. It'll make you stay longer than you want to stay. And you'll end up paying more than you want to pay. So he said, I'm going to stop this. I'm sorry. See, you can be done with the sin. That don't mean the sin done with you. You were over there. You were going left. He said, I'm sorry. I ain't dealing with y'all. But then now sin's pursuing you. Sin's showing up at your job. Sin calling your phone at different hours. Of... That's sin. But see, it, it acts as if I'm not going to hurt you. It reminds me of, of the man who, who was in uh, an Arctic situation. And uh, it was very cold and it was sub, sub zero temperatures. And it was a snake who slithered up to him. And he, the snake was shivering. He said, Sir, can I come into your bosom, please? Can I? It's so cold out here. He said, I promise, I promise I won't bite you. So the man started feeling sorry for the snake. He let him, the snake slipped up his arm and came up on his chest. He held him inside. And he was there for about five minutes. And he said, ah, ah. Then he threw the snake out. You said you weren't going to bite me. You lied. He said, man, what do you expect? I'm a snake. <laughs> That's my nature. His intent was to deceive from the beginning. Sound like Satan to me. Man, you ain't got to pay attention to this class. You ain't got to pay attention. They don't know what they talk. Look, they in service. They preoccupied. They ain't paying attention. You ain't got You ain't got to waste your time on all of this. Stay home. Get yourself rest so you can go to work on Monday. Who do you think empowers you to work anywhere? Some of y'all been sick. You got tests. You got, let me tell you something. Self can't help self when self is hurting. You wouldn't need therapy if you could make yourself better. You wouldn't need the doctors don't even know. They got a team of people, but one can't figure it out. Look, sometimes that's where we find ourselves. You think you're so strong. Yeah, as long as you got your vigor and vitality, you got to understand this, where your vigor and vitality comes from. It comes from God. Amen. Don't forget that. All the things you're able to do and do well, God's empowering you to do it. Don't forget it. Deuteronomy 8, don't forget the Lord. What was his response? They forgot he says, so it's our job. As members of the Bible, encourage one another every day. Live for the Lord. So just pay attention when you're in worship. Bro, pay attention when you're because you don't want to miss this. These streets are mean out here. He said, you could be paying attention, but the car next to you, if they not, they can still be in your life. You're only in control, but so much. You think because you've been able to navigate from one place, right? And some of you have crisscrossed the country and airplanes and things of that nature. You, you, look, do you, do you understand how much faith it takes? Yes, yes, yes. 
You get on the airplane and you don't even see the pilot. You just go sit down and hope you get to where you go. That's faith. Ain't that somebody? You get on the city bus, you don't ask the bus driver. You don't even know if they got a license. They could have stole somebody's uniform and put their head on. I believe Jack and Dolly got a license, though. But I'm saying, you do a lot by faith. You put that tongue in, whatever you got, and you go sit down. I'm hoping and praying. You go to your doctor. You haven't even checked see if they were certified. You just assume. You say, I'm in the network. I just assume. He said, we're going to write you this script and take this way. And you go home and take it. The pills is all kind of colors, all different shapes and sizes. And you just pour the water and hope for the best. That's faith. But when I think about a God who has made provision for us time and time again, you know yourself. There are some situations you never would have gotten out of if it wasn't for God. You know it was for God. You know it was him. You know it was him. My finger is straight. That was God. Yeah. Because they were against me. They didn't know how. I didn't even know how. God made a way. Amen. See, the way maker is saying, listen, continue to look to me to be the way. My people call by my name, follow my path. That's what he's saying to us today. He come back tonight get the other two. You don't know Jesus in the party of your sins. You need to come to him and be in relationship with him today. You come to him by hearing the gospel message, how his son Jesus died, that preeminent one that he began talking about at the beginning of the chapter, how his son died. He was buried, rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. Be willing to believe that same message. Be willing to repent of your sin, which means make a change of mind, which then leads to a change of action. And then, look, he said, well, I, I don't want to make this start because I might mess up. Just look around. Everybody on your row, in front of you, and back of you, they done messed up too. And continue to. It's part of our humanly frame. Thank God for grace. But you want to come into a relationship with him. Be willing to confess Christ. Don't need you to confess your sin. Just say, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God. He said, Matthew 10, 32, 33, Whosoever therefore confess me before men, him will I confess before my Father which is in heaven. Be willing today to be baptized in water for the remission of your sin. Jesus said, you want to be part of mine, you got to be washed. Acts 22, 16, arise, be baptized, washing away your sins, calling on the name of the Lord. Will you be saved today? That's the plan. It's as simple as that. We, we, we have the, the clothes ready for you. You don't have to get yours wet. God's looking for an obedient heart. When we don't obey God, there's pain on the back end. Yes. And see, this is the thing about God. He said, listen, I'll let you live your life anywhere you want to live. But payday Sunday. Yes. 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 He said, there's coming today. day. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue will confess that I'm Lord for the Lord. You remember the body of Jesus Christ. You've allowed things to distract you like we all can. Let me tell you something. In order for our church to push forward when we pray for one another, and uplift one another, strengthen one another, hold each other accountable, when you make a decision to get better and be accountable for the things you say you're going to do, we become stronger as a body. Nobody can do that for you. You have to do it. Say what you mean. Mean what you say. And we're all as a body blessed as a result of those statements and actions. If you haven't been giving it all up for God, to God, ask for prayer. If you're struggling in there, just ask for prayer because we all need it. It's me, it's me. It's me, all those standing in the need of prayer. We're about to stand and sing the Savior's invitation. Why don't you come on today? Come on, Jesus. Come on, let me say. If you need prayer, come on. What can wash away my. Just in Jesus, doesn't know